And we're back with a brand new episode of Football United. More than a month of the Hero Indian Super League action. But the biggest news actually comes from off the pitch as I welcome Darren Caldera, Eric Bartlew and Paul Macefield. Fine company, isn't it? On any episode of Football United. But not such fine news coming from Kolkata. Mace, I'll come to you first. As ATK Mohan Bagan Football Club have parted ways with uh, Antonio Lopez Habas. Did, did that surprise you? Uh, it came as a little bit of a surprise, I think. I'm sure everyone would agree because you turn around, you look at the plethora of talent that he has there in the squad and you would have felt and thought that they'd have been the ones that would have been pushing to be the top of the table and, you know, the top two, three uh, around the Christmas time. He's got it all completely wrong. He can't find the right mix. I think results have gone against him. So, football's a cynical game at times and if you don't get results, you're going to get the sack. It's as simple as that. And Maybe that was coming. We do hear it is by uh, mutual consent that they parted ways. Um, and maybe he saw the writing on the wall and, and decided that enough was enough. We'll discuss this in a little more detail, but uh, Eric, what was your first reaction when you heard about it? Not, not a surprise for me, Anant. Um, you know, I think he, you can see him on the sideline. He, he was quite a, a frustrated fr uh, figure with a lot of the referees. A lot of the coaches on the other side, it seemed like he's having a fight with people all the time. So you can see he's very frustrated with the way his team's behaving and the way he's playing. Defensively, not the same style that Habas likes to keep. And look, some of those signings he's made are not, you know, maybe his players that he wanted in. So there's a lot of inside information that we've received. But um, at the end of the day, I think he's sort of tapped out a little bit too early for me. Darren? Yeah, I mean, uh, what Eric says is right there. You can see he was frustrated with the way uh, the team was playing. He did mention in one of his post-game interviews about, uh, you know, how he's saying, this is not my team. This is not the way they play. Because we've seen a half of our side, uh, you know, they're generally very, very, you know, they keep it tight at the back, don't concede a lot of goals. But here they're conceding so many goals. And they weren't struggling at the moment. Uh, you know, they had a great start. Yes, they've hit a bit of a roadblock, I would say. But they were just uh, a win or two away from the top four again. As you can see, we've got uh, plenty to talk about on Antonio Lopez Havas, but uh, what else have we got on this show for you? Let's find out. It's a move no one expected as Antonio Lopez Havas parts ways with ATK Mohan Bagan. When Eric Bartlu met Igor Angulo. What have been the standout moments from the first month of the Hero Indian Super League 2021 22? Alright, we can't stop talking about Antonio Lopez Havas, so uh, let's begin from where we left off. Eric, it started off well and then it went downhill. That Nasaf result comes to mind. Obviously, the Mumbai City FC result was obviously hard to take again. What went wrong for the team and where did it go wrong according to you? Uh, defensively, first and foremost. From my point of view, I think he's realised he's not going to win the league this year. Um, and he, he's just trying to protect that legacy. Some coaches do this when they think, oh, I've not got a chance of, of winning the league. And it's disappointing to see because I think he could have waited a little bit longer and helped his team you know, get past the Christmas New Year phase. And whenever you get a resignation in this type of environment, you now have to get someone to sit in the quarantine for seven, 14 days. Who's going to take over the club? He's really left, left his club in a, in, a, in a difficult spot. So I hope for ATK Mohan Bagan, they can turn it around and get themselves up the table. But for me, yeah, he tapped out a little bit too early. Fair point. And Darren, this looked like such a non havas team, didn't it? I mean, the discipline was gone. Was he trying to play a more expansive style just because of the pressure of the signings, perhaps? Well, I think so because, uh, you know, last season as well, we, we were critical of Habas uh, with the kind of players we he had uh, um, at his disposal. We, we kept saying that the football is too defensive. Uh, you know, they were winning those games 1-0 and 2-1. But he still said, like, with the players he's, he has, he's got to be more, you know, more attacking. They've they got to be scoring more goals. And he, and he did that the first two games, at least. They were, they were flying the first two games again. We were like, OK, this is a new Habas side that we're seeing. Uh, but then the problem was they started leaking goals in, they weren't defending well and they weren't scoring enough. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was Eric who asked uh, Roy Krishna in one of the games, uh, you know, why is uh, Krishna dropping down, you know, he's dropping into midfield to get the ball because then he straight away said that he's not getting the service. Uh, so that's been a problem for them. Bumo hasn't, he's been on and off, uh, you know, in patches. Uh, Yoni Kauko as well, I, I don't think they're getting enough of balls up front. So. It's been a strange couple of games uh, for ATK Mohan Bagan. Uh, you know, every every single time they took the field, you thought, okay, probably this would be that that win again, and they would start winning again. But it's not happened the last few games. So, yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. Um, you know, difficult to explain, but it hasn't been working out for for ATK Mohan Bagan. Right, from strategy and tactics and philosophy to the legacy of Habas, obviously somebody who got his hands on the uh, Hero ISL Trophy twice, made it to the final three times as a head coach. 
Eric, what is the legacy of uh, Habas for you? Well, just that, it's trophies. It's uh, the end result. And I think, you know, like I said to you, he's tapped out a little bit too early for me. But from his point of view, it's probably very intelligent because he's not leaving his team down the bottom. It's kind of mid-table. And it, it, he probably thinks, I can't get this group of players to a trophy this year. I don't want to be a part of that. And I, I would rather get out now than, you know, think about Mumbai lifting the trophy and me being unsuccessful again. So I think he's tapped out a little bit too early, but look, he leaves the league with being one of the most successful coaches. He's got a very, very particular style of play, which is not everyone's cup of tea, but it's been the way that ATK Mohan have had success. And, um, you know, I, I, I dare say he'll be back in India in, in the near future. Speaking of successful coaches, there are always comparisons made, particularly when a manager joins or leaves. Uh, according to you, Darren, who had the greater impact, Habas or Lobera in the ISA? You know, Habas has won titles as well as Lobera. So, you know, um, Habas has been there longer as well. So, if you look at the record, though, it, both both coaches have been outstanding with their respective teams. Uh, you know, very difficult to pick just one of them because, uh, well, they have different, you know, styles of uh, football there, but they've both won titles playing those particular uh, you know, styles of football. Having said that, Mace, I'll, I'll swing it around to you in a different way. According to you, between Habas and Lobera, who left Indian football and Indian footballers in a better place? Uh, that's Lobera, without a question. You turn around and look at the work that he did at, um, at Goa, and then you look at how he carried it on with Mumbai. Yes, he, he got his favourite players that he wanted to get from Goa back into over to Mumbai with him as well. Habas, if you, if you made mistakes, you were out of the team and you wondered when you were going to get back in the side. I think Libera actually gave players opportunities and chances. He's taught them football, he's taught them pure football, the way that you know we saw Goa and we saw Mumbai play. Whereas Habas just plays his system. So if you're talking about development of players, you're talking about who's left the bigger imprint on the actual game itself, then then it's definitely Libera. Well, speaking of Libera, let's talk about his former side, who are obviously obviously flying off the blocks this season. Uh, no team has ever gone back-to-back -back, uh, in the history of the Hero Indian Super League, Eric. But uh, Mumbai City FC are certainly threatening to do that under Des Buckingham. Uh, simple question, are they better than last season? They're not as good as last year yet, but I feel they're running away with this competition. I think they're very, very difficult to catch. Um, and look, you know, they've just got the quality in the right areas. I think there's a little bit of that Libera blueprint still there from last season. Um, but he's just added a little bit, little bit more confidence, a little bit more diversity to the way that they play. Um, but I think they're going to be unstoppable. Mace, what makes them special according to you? They recruited incredibly well. They do have the backing behind them to be able to go and do that. And when I'm saying that, I'm on about the foreign players that they've brought in as well, the likes of Casio, where they have scouting networks all over the world. They know what's needed in this league. They go and get players that can play in this league. There isn't really a chink in the armour at the moment, and they can get better because they do miss the odd opportunity. The only way that you can get at them, and we've seen one or two sides do, Jan Shepard, I think it was, where you press them, but you've got to do a full press for 90 minutes. Everybody has to be at the races, everybody has to be on their game. If not, they'll pick you off, they'll pass it around, and that's what makes them so good. The confidence that flows through that club just seems to be absolutely spot on. Those are ominous words, right? There isn't really a chink in the armour, Darren said, uh, but can they be stopped is the question. There's still a lot more to come from this team. And they've done brilliant uh, uh, in the off-season. Uh, you know, we've seen Jahu. I think this is the best I've, I've watched him play. Um, I think the role that they've got for for him and credit to Des Barking in there. You know, Puya sitting back, uh, Jahu moving a lot up front. I can see May smiling as well right now when I talk about Jahu. <laughs> but yeah, he's been he's been outstanding. Um, and there's Rahul Beke as well. I think Rahul Beke is playing his best football so far. I think he's defending really well and now scoring those important goals. Uh, they are looking like a very, very solid side uh, and I think they can only only get better. If you want to stop Mumbai at the moment, you just need to defend really well, which I don't think a lot of teams are doing at the moment. Uh, but yeah, you need, you, need, you need to have your best day and hopefully, you know, watch Mumbai not really have their best day at the same time. And hopefully the likes of Igor and Gulo do not have a great day on the pitch. But the, but the thing is, somebody's got to stop him from scoring goals. But Eric Padlu managed to do that. He managed to stop him from training because he sat him down for an interview over a Zoom call, asked him a few tricky questions and this is what happened. Great start, mate. Uh, for yourself personally, five goals in, in the first couple of games. Um, did you set yourself a target? I never put uh, some concrete uh, number of goals on my, my main target. So I prefer to go little by little and most important, like, like you perfectly know, is uh, the collective uh, targets uh, when I came here. 
is for winning the title and the and the seal. And we are on our way to, to do it. And after, of course, I'm a striker. And of course, if we are there fighting for, for the titles, of course, I, it's because I, I scored some goals. But the most important thing is to, to win uh, collectively and we are in our way. Yeah, winning is a great habit. So, you know, how was the feeling amongst the camp? Obviously, you had the one loss, but you've gone on to, you know, really dominate the competition. How's the feeling with everybody in, in the new team? Ah, fantastic. Uh, from the beginning, from the first game, was fantastic against uh, Chigoa. Uh, it gave us a lot of confidence. After it's true that uh, we, we have uh, uh, we lost against Hyderabad, but after again we continue the good dynamic, winning uh, all the rest of the games. So we are in a good moment, but we know that the league is, is long. For yeah. sure, we will have some bad moments and we have to be ready for it. Yeah. But now we have to enjoy it. We have to be focused on ourselves because we know it that. Uh, if we are focused, uh, we can win everything, we prove it. Uh, if we can continue this, this run uh, as long as possible. Igor, thanks for joining us, mate. Um, loving, loving your work on the field and pleasure to watch you and your team. Good luck for the rest of the season. Okay, thank you very much. Back from Igor Angulo at Mumbai City FC, we turn our attention to Jamshedpur FC. The men of steel have shown plenty of steel under Owen Coyle. They look like a side transform, don't they, Darren? Because uh, certainly something is working for them. The question is, what is working for them, according to you? Owen Coyle is doing a great job with the guys. Uh, you know, he's made them a lot more stronger and they're playing more like a cohesive unit now compared to last season. Uh, I think they've done really well with some of the signings as well. Um, and he's, he's giving opportunities to a lot of the young players um, coming in. And they are playing with a lot more confidence. you got Komal Thattal there, Narendra Jitu, you know, players who haven't played a lot of football in the last few seasons, but are looking like seasoned uh, pros at the moment. My favourite phrase of this season, certainly on Football United, has been dark horse. But uh, Mace, are they the darkest horse amongst the dark horses this season? Are they the biggest surprise package of the season for you? Well, I had them in my top four, so they're not that dark. The recruitment has been absolutely spot on. And with these younger players getting the opportunity to play, Jitu in particular, they look absolutely outstanding this season. And he won't leave him out, he's played him out wide, he's tucked him back into the middle, so that's testament to the quality that he has. And there's a, a real belief in the Jamshed Poor side. I think you can see that when they play, you can see a togetherness, and that's the most important thing. I think Owen's got it quite right, and I, I would be gobsmacked if they didn't finish in the top four on current form. They have to keep everybody fit, don't get me wrong, they've got to stay away from injuries, but if they do that, they'll be in with a great chance of finishing up there. They'd probably want to uh, just put some cotton wool around Greg Stewart, right, Eric? I mean, because he's been such a standout player. Has he been the signing of the season for you? Yeah, he's, he's, he's lit the, the league on fire, absolutely. He's just so good at, you know, dribbling, taking players on. I think yeah, you know, he's built his confidence from that first game, probably looked at it and gone, oh, I'm getting a lot of space here. I can move here. I can I can run there with the ball and no one's going to tackle, tackle me like maybe I would get that in Scotland. And you can see why maybe he didn't do well enough to play regularly in the Rangers team because the way he plays is very, um, you know, off the cuff and he can dribble and get past players. In Scotland, he'd be getting smacked every every time he gets the ball and, and maybe he's better off the bench. But here in India, he's afforded more time to run with the ball. And I think that's the best way that he can play for this team is the X factor for the club. Um, the only thing I will say about Jamshedpur is they had, you know, that blip against Mumbai um, where they were completely undone. If you take Mumbai out of the competition, I think Jamshedpur are a top two side. They will definitely be in the top four this year. Amianovic or Greg Stewart, biggest signing of the season for you, Darren? You know, he's, he's not someone with a lot of pace, but when he's on the ball, it's just like he glides past players. Uh, he's just so good with the ball at his feet and, you know, can uh, move either way. We've seen him, you know, he's a left-footed player, I'm guessing, but a lot of times when he's taking down his right, so defenders don't know, you know, which side to force him on now, because uh, He's a very tricky customer, and then there's Damiano, which uh, I really like Damiano, which I think he's he's probably the best centre back in the league right now. Uh, absolutely solid when it comes to defending, and you can see every single time they concede a goal, he's fuming. Both of them are outstanding, but I think I'm slightly tilting towards Damiano. I'm going to give the same choice to Paul Macefield as well. Hartley, aka Hearts, or Greg Stewart, the biggest signing of the season for you for Jamshedpur. Well, Hearts continued, so I'll still count him in. He is the X factor, as Eric said. For me. He can only get better as well. You do get more accustomed and you do get more climatised the more game time you play. You can, you know what you can do, you know how far you can push your body. I think we've still got another 10-15% to see come through from him as well. And playing in that side where he's got options ahead of him, 
I think he can feed the ball into Valskis. He can play it out wide to a Lendongo or to a, to a Cartal. You know, it's it's all there for him to do. And yeah, by yeah by a long way, I would say Stewart's the sign of the season. As you can see, Mace likes quite a few Jamshedpur players, but he likes nobody more than Owen Boyle, who's leading this Jamshedpur FC side ever so well. So we slip into a short little breather, but we'll uh, leave you with this interview of Owen Boyle, taken by none other than Paul Darren Mace. All good. <laughs> you all right? How are you, pal? Right, lad, how are you? All good. Now, good to see you, pal. Yeah, likewise. Everything okay? Hi, good, good, good. Yeah, same the day, obviously the weather. All right, then, uh, let's get started. Glad to see you, Owen. Uh, good to see that you're having a good season. How's the season been so far for you? Yeah, great to see you, first and foremost, Miss. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we obviously, prior to the other night, were going very well. And even within the game, we did well for large periods. We're disappointed with the goals we lost. But what we are trying to put is, is a, a decent team together. And I think we're getting there. Still work to be done, but we're certainly enjoying the challenge. Talk about the foreign players coming in. We all know where they came from. Wow. How and where did you get Stuart from? Well, Greg, Greg's a player. I mean, as you know, we like the same type of players. Players that We want to win games. Of course we do. But... Equally, we're football fans as well. We want to get excited when players got the ball and you think they're capable of, of doing something exciting to get fans out of their, their seats. And Greg does that. There's no doubt he's a wonderful player, but he's a great attitude as well. And he's a team player because for all his ability on the ball, he worked so hard off it for his teammates. Well, we've seen that this season with other teams. How pleased are you with the influence that these experienced players have had on your young Indian boys? We have lots of young Indian players. You know, in Boris and, and Puma Tatal and Jatendra and Narendra and, and these young ones that, that, that are coming through and developing. It's great that the, the foreign players come in, not only concern themselves about their own, but they're willing to impart the knowledge, wisdom, help these young kids. Because we all want to win the same thing. We want to win games, but we want to help Indian football as well. We want to develop the game. OK, Owen, a quick, fast fire reaction round from you. We want a little bit of embellishment, but let's try and keep them short. Favourite food? Favourite food, steak. Team you support? Well, let's go Celtic. Favourite music? Uh, country and Western. Wow. Best, your favourite player? Ever. Pelé. And your individual best moments ever in football? As a player, probably lots of moments, but certainly two, two big moments. As a player, I, obviously I scored at Wembley in the playoff final for Bolton Wanderers to take us into the Premier League. And obviously as a manager, I won the playoff final, which you know is worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds to take Burnley, a, a small club with a population of 60,000. If you think about the size of India, there's only 60,000 people in Burnley. So to take Burnley into the Premier League after you know so many years that they've been away, I think that was a huge moment. And, and mention the population, we had nearly 40,000 fans at that game. When you think the size of the town's only 60,000 and they're an incredible club. So, we could be here all day, but those two moments, I think, would uh, would be enough. Cool. Thanks, sir. Pleasure, mate. Oh, now the formalities are over. Everybody <laughs> fit. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us on this episode of Football United. We turn our attention now to referees and we caught up uh, in a very special chat with uh, Richard Beebe and he told us about how PGMOL have become the strategic partners with FSDL for the Elite Referee Development Programme. Don't miss it. I wanted to ask you, what are the key objectives that the Elite Referee Development Programme aims to achieve in the next three years? We want to create a pathway for future Indian referees to come through. Um, so we want in years to come uh, referees to start at the lowest level of the game and work their way up so they're ready to referee at the elite level. Uh, we also want to be able to put in place all the support mechanisms required for Indian referees to operate at that higher echelon. Um, and, and, and lastly, we want to put in a coaching structure that assists and help referees on their journey towards elite refereeing. Right, Richard. So just a bit more on how you assess the standard of current Indian refereeing and, and what are you looking forward to the most to develop with the new programme? OK, uh, I think refereeing in India has moved on uh, quite a lot in the last few years. Since, since I first came to India six years ago, Indian referees moved on a hell of a lot. 
Uh, we're getting more consistency in approach. We're getting fitter referees. We're getting referees more in tune with the Indian League, the in the ISL League. We're getting referees who can, who are, are more readily uh, able to uh, 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 and aware of what's going on in Indian football. Richard, um, can we expect technological aids going forward in the Hero ISL? As everybody talks about is VAR and goal line technology. Um, and uh, I know that colleagues in India are, are beginning to review whether uh, that will pay dividends for your football going forward. We use it obviously extensively in England. Um, and there is two models. There's the full VAR and what they call VAR light. Um, and, 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 and much of that depends on the resource available. It's a safety net for that really. uh, VAR is predominantly there for those big impact decisions that unfortunately the on-field decision is clearly not quite correct. So it's a safe, safety blanket to, to make sure that those high impact decisions don't overly influence the game and the correct decision is reached. Whether you have them in India, that's a matter for India in terms of, of the uh, Football Association working together with the league regarding it, it, its incorporation into Indian football. All right, gentlemen, more than a month into the season of the Hero Indian Super League. So it's only fitting that I ask Eric Bartman first, the standout moment for you so far this season. My standout moment was uh, Harman Jot Cabra's performance against his old club, BFC. He uh, completely dominated captain leader legend and uh, got a hero of the match for it. And it's always good when you see a player go back and play against their old club and do well. And you know, I was delighted for Cabra for that. Darren? On a serious note, it was when uh, Rohit Dano scored his, his first goal. I was absolutely buzzing for the kid. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's always good to see the young Indian players get on the score sheet. You could see how much it, uh, it it meant to him. So, yeah, hopefully he gets a couple of more goals. And you can see he's getting a lot more game time now under uh, Manolo Marquez. So, yeah, good for him. What about you, Paul? Darren May's feeling a Santa Claus. OK, over 30 Indian goal scorers. <laughs> positive. 115 goals scored, one hat-trick out of the three. To go with the Indians scoring the goals. I think it's fantastic that we're getting a lot more Indian goal scorers this season. That's those, those are my moments of the season. Let's find out our top four predictions as well now, since you guys are at it. So uh, you can't change them from what you said at the beginning of the season, but I'll give you maybe one option to change. So Eric, are you changing any from the four you predicted at the beginning of the season? Of the yeah, season? I need to make one change. Yeah, I mean I had Mumbai, Jamshedpur, ATK, Mohan and and FC Goa, but I'm going to take FC Goa out and put. Hyderabad into that mix now. They've just shown that consistency that you know you need to get yourself in that top four. They're not going to lose a lot of games this year and they've already picked up a couple of good results. So Mumbai, Jamshapur, Hyderabad, ATK, Mumbagan. Right, so that means that we're expecting a new manager bounce for the Mariners. Darren, you agree with that? Or you have somebody different in your top four? Yeah, I had someone uh, actually I had uh, Mumbai, ATK, Mohanbagan, Hyderabad and uh, FC Goa, I think I have to say bye bye to FC Goa, and it's okay. it's, gonna be, it's it's going to be Chennai that that is in my top four. Yeah. Come on, somebody put Goa in, Miss. Surprise us, shock us. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you with this one. ATK Mumbai won't be there, so I'm going with Mumbai, Hyderabad, Chennai, Jamshedpur. Those will be the top four this season. Are you going to be dyeing your hair in case one of them doesn't make it? Oh, okay. <laughs> but you're, you're dying it anyways, you know. In a yeah, yeah. Why just uh, <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Which means on Christmas Day when that Santa Claus hat comes off, you will see Mason Blonde and I'm sure you cannot wait to see that. Gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a cracking episode of Football United and plenty discussed as well. Merry Christmas to all of you from all of us and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.